Scorpio. Hello Scorpio, this is your September forecast for 2013 and this month we're going to be looking at how you're interacting with groups and people and friend circles of friends and organizations and you might find yourself on the map of really wanting to expand this area here in September. There is both the Sun, the New Moon and also Mercury in this area and I see how you're wanting to attract and communicate with and even um, with some friends also analyze whatever situation now is deeply at work with you or within you. Uh, and this is due to the Saturn energy that you're feeling here in the first house uh, of personality uh, and that is what you radiate outwards. And that Saturn, as we've spoken over these last few months, Saturn is the planet that restricts a little bit. It holds those rings, right? And so if you've been feeling that things have been holding you back or holding you down a little bit or slowing things up in, in this area, well, maybe that's going to be the topic of discussion with your friends. And uh, from it, I'm seeing there's a deepening, uh, a soul search for why these things are happening and trying to look for, not the negative, but trying to, to look for what good does it do? You know, why is it there? Because uh, the universe never makes a mistake. It's there for a reason. And it's really kind of like harnessing your own soul power because it's your first house. That's the I am essence. And, and you're, you're kind of in a very slow rebirth, okay? Because your sign is all about rebirth. And Saturn's kind of turning the tide. It's coming in with different types of energy now that slowly but surely is working its way to give you new strength. And what I always like to say about these energies, as heavy as they can feel at times, but, but think about it this way, a, a diamond can only be created under pressure, okay? So you're pressurizing, you're crystallizing the essential self. And once Saturn is done with this area of your chart, you will see the radiant new you, okay? So it's more like peeling off uh, exfoliating <laughs> your spirit so that that new skin can come out and glow like baby skin. We have uh, Venus this month too. It's in the 12th house, so that's the subconscious mind. It's the spiritual inner self. Venus right here is kind of looking at what can I do to, to really spa myself, you know, to bring a, a sense of recharge of batteries is what you need. And it is in the sign of Libra, and it rules Libra, but it's in the house of Pisces, which is Neptunian. So we have this beautiful blend here this month of Venus and then the higher octave of Venus, which is Neptune, coming together, and it's more like this inner soul song speaking directly to you, whispering your name, and giving you inspiration to do those things that you, need, you know to do. To, to heal and balance because it is Libra, the sign of scales. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we have Mars and Leo, and uh, Mars in itself is fiery, it's a fire sign, and uh, it, Leo is too. So we have, in spite of the need to pull back and harmonize, Mars wants to push forward and be active and dynamic, and this is the area of your workspace, your career. So, you know, you might feel that you have a load to do out there, and yet at the same time it's like you want to split away and just, you know, not necessarily pull the blanket over your head, but, but to be at home and put on some so soothing music. So try to find the happy balance, and thank God the, the uh, aspects of them are harmonized by sign. So try to do it this way, that when you're at work, focus on work, do not think about anything else at home. Don't allow stress to get to you. And then when you're home, do not think about work. Allow that to be there. Leave it on your desk when you go home. And then be in that beautiful, sacred inner chamber of your inner spirit. And then you will get through this month here beautifully. 
Then we have Jupiter, ninth house, so that has uh, things to do with foreign countries, uh, influences, people, and uh, those foreign places that may still be calling you, you know, the, the need or the want, the wish to go. Jupiter is a globe trotter, and uh, many of you have been traveling, and more travel is coming up. Jupiter rules this area, so she's home here. And it's in the sign of Cancer, so that has to do with uh, home and family. Maybe we'll be traveling to, to meet um, family far away, or it could also just be your extended family as well, your spiritual family, because it is a spiritual house. And Jupiter wants to expand here in this area. And some of you might also feel the calling to continue some spiritual studies so that you can kind of grow this awareness, this consciousness that that you so have with you by your very, you know, deep and spiritual nature. So there is that wanting to kind of unlock more of the mysteries of the universe here. Um, especially because Jupiter right now ties into to Neptune, okay? And Neptune is also very spiritual and vast. Neptune has no limits, right? So it's just the subconsciousness tying into the, not just the whole universe, but the multiverses, right? Jupiter trying to figure that out. Where is my direction? Where do I fit in in this little speck? And then Saturn coming in here, which, you know, we were talking about that that is limiting or grounding you. And this is a beautiful place to have Saturn now as you're trying to figure out your matrix what makes you tick, your inner spiritual DNA, so to speak. Um, so yes, it's a creative time, it's a time to expand, it, and it's a time to uh, listen to these spiritual callings, and I think the frustration would be is when you don't have time to do enough of it. You know, when the world calls you, you know, to go do something over there, and you just want to be here, you just want to sit there and be your zen, right? Um, but find your balance. It's, it's always possible and it's always doable. Um, it's all about finding it in your daily routine. And what's difficult a little bit for you, Scorpio, is that Uranus is in your sixth house, which is the sector of daily routines. And, you know, as far as Uranus goes, you can never really plan or structure because it will just go, it, it, it fluctuates, it's unpredictable where you might foresee you're going to have a beautiful, nice, calm week and then suddenly you get family from 10 places of the country coming in all at once. It's that kind of thing. It's hard to plan as long as Uranus is here. Your daily routine is just the way it is and it will be for the next at least five to six years before she moves out of there. So you got to just roll with it. And this is also the lesson of Uranus for you uh, is how to be flexible. See, because Scorpio doesn't like to be flexible, it, it, it's a sign that really likes everything, you know, predictable. Um, that, that's where you obtain your, your sense of energy and power and empowerment. Um, it's a fixed sign, and fixed signs don't like change unless they choose it for themselves, but you know you better get used to it though because this Uranian energy is, is not anything near close to being fixed, <laughs> okay? So not just from week to week, I mean even day to day and even like hour to hour, things can change like this. And this is how you need to be. So let's look at what's uh, happening top of the month here for you, Scorpio, because we're starting off here with the Sun-Pluto uh, trying, which means that something you've been working towards perhaps now is going to come together. Uh, it's going to gel for you. This is in the area of communication and groups. So you might have a talk, maybe you have a presentation here on this day, and it's something that, that for you is quite serious, I feel, because this communication, you have um, Pluto there in the third house, and, and so you want to come across you know, as knowledgeable, you know, and, and this is so important to your nature, and, and Pluto is there for a long time, next 12 to 15 years. And, uh, but this day, the sun is going to be training it, and so if you're having the presentation, just be sure and rest assured that you're going to do absolutely fine here. The sun is in the house of, you know, groups and organizations, so I'm kind of thinking there could be a presentation coming in.
or something of that nature, of course. Then we have the new moon here on the 5th, September 5th. It is going to be in this area of having fun, spending time with friends, and uh, your affirmation should be that because you're probably loving it, you know, and you haven't had much time. So try to make that little promise, and that's what affirmations are all about, and then intentions too, is when you're loving it, try to tell yourself here that I need to make more room for this. Why? Because it balances me. It gives me my healing, because that's your 12th house. You only heal when you balance up your outgoing energies. So try to make that affirmation very strong and clear. Release it to the universe, and then let go, but then it will be... Yeah, and then we have on the seventh we have the sun and Jupiter in a beautiful mix here and I think that is going to be a day where you might get some affirmation coming back to you from whatever it is you did there on the first okay so like a week later you might get some kudos or something and Mercury is going to be moving out of this house of friendships or organizations and groups and whatnot so it's going to leave that for a while while it's going to turn its focus inwards so you can start listening more to yourself, not just out there, but turning it inwards. This is really good. Venus is still there for just a little day or two because on the 10th, then she's moving out of the 12th house into your first house. And you know what? That's for women especially. The best time of the year is when Venus transits our first house because that's how we radiate. That's what we show the world. It's a rising sign, right? And when Venus is there, you just have that much more of a glow. So you can look forward to it. It is from uh, September 10th. And uh, then she will be uh, training Neptune in the fifth house for self-expression, to have fun. It is our house of uh, joy and what we do when we do our hobbies or leisure things. And so Venus here will just want to have a lot of fun. And especially also because it's the house of love and romance, uh, dating and so forth. And uh, you might just have a dream date here on um, this evening. Then we have Mars and uh, Uranus here. They are also meeting up in a good combination. Uh, this would be between your 10th house and your 6th house. So something at work. Uh, it could be around your co-workers, but it has to do with your career and how you are putting something together either for yourself or for your co-workers or strategizing and building something here for um, your career ladder. So there could be either news or door opening up for you. Those of you looking for work, and I know a lot of you are, um, at least very many of my uh, clients here uh, have been, you know, not just having lost their jobs, but they're also looking for and sending out a lot of applications. Uh, for you, this is the month where things can happen. It can be rock and roll because Mars is up there in your career house and Uranus has the power of, you know, turning the corner and bringing something to you. So you Scorpion should be looking really good right now as far as getting the interviews that you need or, or getting some responses in the work field. And then we have on the 18th, we have uh, Venus and Saturn. And Saturn here being your first house, uh, Venus is now in your first house and they're going to be conjunct. And, and that brings, you know, something that's of value to you, whether, you know, it's love. R Venus also rules... Um, money and those things that are valuable to you and self-esteem when it comes together with something so sober as saturn it's like well that's got to mean something and uh, saturn will ground or root it so this is a day to look forward to if you're going to sign any contracts uh the 18th would be perfect 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 for it and especially also because this very same venus is six styling uh pluto in your third house which again has to do with uh, communications, contracts, paperwork, um, interviews, of course, here we go again, work, right? Interviews, and uh, when Saturn is there, it's like really telling you that this is the day that you can land something that will have more of a long-lasting uh, consequence for you, positively say, uh, put. 
and uh, Venus is also intensely connected to Pluto here so the two of them between Pluto and Saturn I think you get something made here mid-month all right and then Pluto is going direct it's been asleep for several months in your third house of uh, traveling uh, short distance travel and uh, anything written documents projects that you've been working on maybe there has been delays there not due to you but it could be coming from groups uh, that you've been working with maybe they haven't been you know uh, on the up and up and if that's been lagging well then that's caused stress to you but this you should start seeing moving forward which it will between now and the end of the year you're good to go on that note and then we have some healing here on uh, the 20th Venus and uh, Chiron uh, so it should be a beautiful day here and this will also be in the sign of Scorpio and it is in your first house so there might be some loving words that can come in and actually you know take away the scab you know the wound whatever wound <laughs> is there um, that, that healing is always more like that internal feeling then we have a point of uh, karmic uh, connection this is uh, Saturn now and the moon node also in your first house mind you so it looks like whatever it is you've been reaching for, which the nodes always indicate, and it's those higher uh, aspirations that you have, well, it touching Saturn means that you're going to be locking in something you can be quite proud of here on the 25th. And then on the 26th, this is how we're going to be ending this month, Venus and uh, Jupiter. Uh, that will be coming from your first house and Jupiter up in your ninth house. So there's some good news coming to you from afar. Uh, it could be family, it could be friends, um, whatever the deal is, it's something I see you feeling very joyful for and about. I say family too because it is in the sign of cancer, uh, which rules family. But then again, it could be from anywhere, but it's something that you're going to take straight to your heart. So this is what we have here for you, uh, Scorpio, and uh, I wish you a really good month. And uh, before you sign off tonight, do go listen to your moon and your rising sign so you can get a different take on what's going on because they all pertain to you, both the moon sign and the rising sign. You get more of it, all right? Take care now. See you next time.